Earlier this month, a satellite captured a photo of an old discarded rocket stage floating in space. Scientists estimate that this piece of space junk is taller than a three-story building and has circled the Earth for more than 20 years. This leaves us wondering what really happens to all of the dead satellites, rockets, and other hardware that's been launched into space. Where does it all go? Or not go? Dr. Jonathan McDowell is an astronomer and astrophysicist at the Center for Astrophysics at Harvard and the Smithsonian. There are several thousand satellites that are still orbiting the Earth that are dead. When a satellite dies, it doesn't just fall out of the sky. It's still got orbital velocity, just like the moon. It doesn't need an engine to stay up, right? And so there's plenty of dead satellites up there. And when you launch a satellite, the way you get it into orbit is with a rocket. And the upper stage of the rocket that pushes the satellite to orbital velocity has got orbital velocity too. And so it ends up in orbit. And so there's several thousand leftover rocket stages whizzing around the Earth. And some of these rocket stages have leftover fuel and years later explode in space, creating small bits of shrapnel forever floating in orbit. Satellites also collide into each other from time to time. There have been a number of military anti-satellite tests, as they're called, where the various militaries, Russia, America, China, India, have smashed missiles into a satellite and broken it up, which is really bad because it's sort of dangerous for all the other traffic. So how much space junk surrounds our planet? The latest estimate puts it at 25,000 objects that are all at least the size of a softball or larger. We think there may be millions of smaller pieces that just are too small to show up on the radars. So, and they're dangerous as well. You know, they may be small, but if they hit you at 17,000 miles an hour, that's going to hurt. And so there's a huge problem with uh, satellites having to dodge this debris all the time and sometimes just getting hit by it. There are almost 10,000 active satellites currently orbiting Earth with plans to launch thousands more in coming years. While this seems like a lot, billions of people rely on these machines every day for GPS, cellular coverage, internet, and weather forecasting. 10% are things that work and 90% are basically garbage rocket bodies, dead satellites, pieces of satellites, nuts, bolts, that sort of thing. That's Dr. Moriba Ja, an associate professor of aerospace engineering and engineering mechanics at the University of Texas at Austin. He's also the co-founder and chief scientist of Privateer Space. Ja says that many experts are worried about the growing space junk issue because even the smallest pieces of debris can damage a working satellite and knock out major services. So much information is uniquely provided by satellites. We couldn't get the data in other ways. Imagine if these satellites that are now monitoring and trying to see where people are trying to flee for their lives and help them out and these sorts of things. Imagine if a piece of debris just hit a couple of these. It's game over. There's just no way to support, learn, know any of these things. And all of this floating trash poses a danger to humans in space. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station have had to take cover several times as they've made their way through heavily littered areas. There's always a chance that a bad collision with one of these fast-traveling pieces could critically damage the station. So, what's being done to clean up this mess? There are several different approaches to clearing this debris, but McDowell highlights one innovation in particular. China has gotten into the space junk game and or the space junk removal game, I should say, and had a garbage truck in space that went up to a dead navigation satellite that was contaminating a valuable orbit, the geostationary orbit. And they clamped onto this satellite and boosted it up another several hundred miles and then let it go and came back down to the same geostationary orbit to look for a new target to tow. And so it's sort of like a tow truck in space and so just clearing the junk out of the busiest lanes. An important part of this conversation is that there's space junk at varying levels of Earth's orbit. The garbage truck idea is great for moving debris that lives higher up and is further away from the planet, but there's also thousands of pieces of junk in low Earth orbit that will eventually fall back to Earth. While this may sound like a win-win, these satellites, rockets, and other items all burn up as they re-enter the atmosphere, releasing small aluminum oxide particles, which damage the stratospheric ozone layer. 
Between 2016 and 2022, the presence of these particles surged eightfold, according to a study published earlier this month in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. Researchers warn of the critical long term effects to the atmosphere if this trend continues. Another big focus in the field is the need for improved regulation on what's launched into space to begin with. The successful removal of five satellites doesn't mean much if 20 more replace it. Aside from a couple of treaties, that are broadly interpreted, there isn't much else. So pretty much any country can launch almost whatever they want. There are treaties talking about trying to not put weapons in space, you know, nuclear weapons and just weapons in general, these sorts of things. But yes, there's broad interpretation to the treaties. Between our heavy reliance on satellites and our growing focus on private and public space travel, it's important that Earth's orbit is cleaned up and maintained over time. To find out more about this topic and our guests, Maura Baja and Jonathan McDowell, visit viewpointsradio.org. This segment was written by our executive producer, Amira Zaveri. Our studio manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Gary Price. Radio Health Journal podcast gives listeners the latest news on what's trending in health, science, technology, and more. Why are certain providers and medical doctors not listening to family members who have lived through a disease path for such a long time? Featuring medical experts who break down complex topics in a way that's easy to understand. Radio Health Journal podcast, available wherever you find your favorite podcasts and at radiohealthjournal.org.